Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Lawrence. I work at Yahoo uh, in the video team. So today I'm going to talk about React and some uh, tips and tricks about scalability and maintainability. So before we start, let's talk about what this is not about. This is not about what is React and why I use it. It's not a React 101. If you need, if you need to know this, just look at the documentation. It's pretty detailed, pretty awesome. And I'm also not going to talk about the framework stuff like Reflux, Fluxer, Fluxible. I'm going to talk about plain React code. So, because in order to write good code in React, you need to know the basics, like how to how to write it in a good way. So. I'm going to talk about several parts in React, uh, which is uh, the key components there. It is the React component, uh, the, the view part of it, and then also the state management part. And at last, I will talk uh, something about the store. But the main focus will be in the component section. So in the component section, uh, we'll talk about mixing and also the key, why the key is important and how to choose a good key. So let's start with the mixing. Uh, this, this talk will, will have a lot of code, um, so just bear with me. We will look at the code together. Um, so let's start simple. Can you guys see the code clearly? Yeah. So um, now uh, we, have a, we have a simple component, which is a channel component. And it's really, really basic. Okay? I have a button, and when I click on the button, I play the video which is uh, calling the player API vp.play video, right? Now I have another, another similar component. I strip out the difference. So here we have, in this different component, I have the same play video method. So anyone who uses React knows this is a pattern for mixing, right? So, oh, sorry, I keep pressing the wrong key. So um, I just move out the command part into the mixing, the play video part, okay? And then in the component, I can just include the mixing and then call the method, right? Simple. So now I want to do something special here. Um, when I play the video, sorry. When I play the video, I want to catch the user attention. Um, I do the alert. So, I alert first, and then I will call the play API mixing to, to uh, play the video. But it seems to have some problem here, right? You calling this dot play video, and then in the in the method you calling the mixing this dot play dot video. It looks like it's going to, to to an infinite loop, right? Actually, React doesn't doesn't even allow you to do that. It it will tell you that. Uh, you're trying to define the same method again, and it's probably come from mixing. Right, we, right. there's a conflict here. So what, what, what can we do? So one way we can do is to rena just rename the method in the mixing, either mixing or in the component, right? But when we talk about scalability, it's probably not a good idea to just, uh, just have a one-time fix, rename it, rename it here, because it will affect all the other components. So one way we can do to minimize the impact of it um, is to put it into a, into a namespace, which is a, an object inside the mixing. So I will group the, the utility methods to that, that interface with the player into an object and place it into the mixing. So that um, when, whenever I want to interact with it, I, I will get the, get the object first and then call the API. Um, but there's actually a, a catch here, which which you need to be careful when we use the when you namespace the, the method in the mixing, which is why I'm going to talk about next the singleton in the mixing. So let's continue with the example, right? So now I want to load the component, load the video, load the channel, and then I want to play the video automatically. So usually, what would you do is to do it in the component did mount. So when the component is on the page, it, React will call it and automatically play the video for you, right? Now, um, I should probably uh, 
not in need the player myself because I'm not sure when, when the components on the page, the window.vp object is ready for me to play the video. So let's, let's init it myself. I, when the component is mount on the page, I init it. I, and I also want to cache the object and, uh, because I don't want to init multiple players here. But something's wrong. Why, why the players suddenly is going crazy playing random videos here? Right? So what's wrong? So it turns out in this code, uh, when I call this.vp, I was trying to, trying to save this video player object into the this. The this here we, is referring to the player API objects, referring to the namespace object. So when all the components is using this maxin, is they're actually sharing the same player API object. So they are sharing the same player, player instance here. So one way we can uh, resolve this is to, we need to realize that all the components, we, we want to have a separate player for, all, for different components. So which means they, the player API namespace object needs to be separated for all the components. So with this knowledge, we know that we need to create a separate, in separate player API object for each of the components. So one way we can do is to define um, an init mixing kind of method here so that uh, when the component is, is, uh, is inited, it will call the init mixing method to, to create its own copy of the, of the namespace object to call the player API here. So what would it look like when, when I have that uh, in the component? In the demand, I would init the maxin first so that I can init, call the player API to init the player, and then I play the video. Sounds, it sounds like a lot of code, right? I need to init the maxin first, and then init the player, and then play video. It's probably not good. But let's not forget uh, one awesome feature of Mixin. In the Mixin, uh, React will do the lifecycle chaining for you, which means that um, you can define the method inside the Mixin, um, and React will automatically execute it for you. So I would put the init Mixin method inside the component demand of the Mixin. So when the, when the component is mounted, the maxim will init itself. And then in the component, you can just do, just do it like, like you did before, just init the player, assume the maxim is ready, the player maxim is ready, and then you can play video, right? So that's, uh, that's all about maxim. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is key. Um, so I'm sure uh, anyone who has been using React have seen this error, the flattened children error. So it, it happens when you're trying to render a list of objects into a, into a list, uh, into, an, into an array, and then you forgot about the key, to put the key in the, in the, in the array entries in your markup. So it, it, it's, it says that uh, each child in the, array needs a unique key, which means the, the li here. So usually, what, what would you do? You would, um, one of the, the most simple key we have is just the array index, right? So let's just put the array index as the, as the key here. And it works, it, it, it removed the, the warning for you, it, it works, but is the, is the array index always the, the best key, even if it works in this case? Let's, uh, let's uh, elaborate more and see, see if it is. So now, when I'm rendering a list of videos, I want to do something uh, when the video is put on the page, and also when the video is removed from the page, which is uh, when it's unmounted. Um, I'm just doing some console log here and assume we are doing, we're doing something uh, special there. And also, I want to, uh, when I execute it, you will see that A is mounted, B is mounted, C is mounted. It's expected, right? It's all good. Now, 
I also want to render some channels as well here. So I would create a channel component similar to the video component. And it did a similar thing. It will uh, do something when the channel is put on the page and do, some, do the cleanup when the channel is removed from the page. Now, let's try to render a mixed list of video and channel here. I, ran, I render the channel, a video, and a channel, and a video. And when it's executed, you would see that uh, it says that uh, X is mounted, A is mounted, Y is mounted, B is mounted. It's all good. It's doing what, we, what we're trying to do as expected. OK, let's do something more. Now, after two seconds, I want to show a, a breaking news video. So what I can do is to uh, do a set timeout. And then I insert a, a video object in front of it, in front of the array. So React will, will re-render it and insert a video in front of it. Now, let's see what's going to happen here. So this is the result on the first render that we did before. Now, but then on the second render, it's going crazy. It will unmount all the previous node for you and then insert the one you just, you just, uh, you just updated, and then mount the, the old one again. This is not what we want. We just want to add a, add a video in front of it. Why is it doing all this, all this unmount, and create, and mount again? So let's, uh, let's take a look at what's, what's, uh, what's changing here. So remember, we are using the array index as the key here. So in the first render, it renders the OL. And then we render the channel video, channel video, and we use the use the index as the key. Now in the second render, it inserts the video in front, but it's using the zero as the key. So we act, we act couldn't couldn't match the second render with the first render. So it's, it's trying to use, it's trying to uh, create a component um, using the zero key, but it's a video component. But in the previous, the zero key is being taken by a channel. It's not, it's not compatible. So what it has to do is to destroy them, unmount them, create and mount again. So it seems the the item ID may may be better here. So let's let's do it. Let's do the item ID as the key. The first render. Okay, the second render is this, this is what we expected. Only it's only touching the C here. So now let's let's look at the compare again. So now when we are using the item ID as the key here, it all the previous nodes are compatible now. It just it just need to insert a, a video component with the C as the as the key here. So this is what we, what we want. So it seems the item ID is a, is a better key than the array index, right? Is it really? Let's, uh, let's take, a, take a look. So now I'm do, I want to uh, build another component that, uh, that, that has a pagination feature. And now I continue to use the item ID as the key. Is item ID uh, good here? Let's take a look. So in the first render is A, B, C as the, as the item. But in the second render, it's trying to create an item with D, E, F as the key. So we have to destroy them again because the key doesn't, doesn't match here. So in this case, it seems the index is, is better, right? So in this case, is we are just passing in different different data into the component, different props here, because it's, we're not changing the key of the component. The, the component can stay inside the, the DOM. Um, we just need to pass in the different props, and React sees that it will just execute the component will receive props method to to do any any actions in it. It doesn't need to destroy and recreate. So. The advice here is to pick the right key. There's, there's no single best solution. Pick, pick the right key depending on your use case. 
Okay, that's uh, that's all about uh, the component side. Now I'm going to talk about uh, state management. So, so two key uh, features in React is the state and prop. Um, and I got asked most is the is that uh, should it be a state? Should it be a prop? All right, let's let's take a look. So, the. Uh, Aside from the, the technical perspective of stay versus prop, um, think about it, prop is for, for external. So for example here, the highlight is, the, is a prop, which means that um, you want to allow the user of this component to init the component in the highlighted state. Or if you want it to be, to be a stay, if you want it to be a stay, it means that the user cannot Init the component into into a highlighted state. You want to restrict it to only allow allow it to be in, in it in the pure state, and only if the user take an action, it set to a highlighted state. So it will be uh, much clearer if you look at uh, if you think about it like this. Um, a component can be in many different situation, but only only certain situation are considered a, 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 stat, a steady a steady state, and the other is more like a unstable state. You cannot actually uh, jump into it when you create it. So, so state or prop. Um, only the settings that you want other people to allow. Only only want, only settings that you want other people to change. Um, externally should be in the props. Okay. For example, um, my example, which uh, which is uh, I always use, is that if you want to create a, a download progress bar component, it should always uh, start from zero percent. So, so now the, the the progress should always be start from zero, and you don't want it to be in the prop. You don't want the progress to be in it as a fifty percent progress. So it should be in the state. Now, what about what about this? I've seen a lot of code that uh, that set the value to this, and usually uh, the explanation is that well, the, we're not using the value to render the markup, so why not? Why just why can't I just set it to, to this? So according to the to the documentation, it says state should contain data that the components event handlers may change to trigger a UI update. So the value you, you are setting doesn't necessarily need to be actually inside the, the markup. As long as the value is being changed by an event handler, and it, it, will, uh, it will be related to the rendering part, it should be set into the state. So for example here, um, I only want to set a st I only want to ex execute a set state to highlight true um, when the when it's not interacted at all. So the inter so this value is participating in determining if I want to set state and when I set state it triggers a UI update here. So this value needs to be in the state even if it's not part of the, the rendering. Then what can I set to this? Should I Always set to set to the stay. There are things that you can set it. So, for example, um, if there are, if the values doesn't change over uh, over the component's lifetime, you can set to this. Um, for example, I want to uh, when I render, I want to I want to uh, render the things that uh, when this component is put on the is put on the page. So. It's interesting because even this value you put into the, is part of the render part, but because the value doesn't change over the lifetime, it's not really a, a state, it's like a, a property of the component. So this, so this value like this, you can set it to this. It doesn't, it doesn't change. What else? Things that change but doesn't mess with the UI, basically is the, is the either case. So for example here, I have a set in the form method, and which is a method that uh, that we keep the the in the form handles when the user call the the set in the form, so that when the when the component is removed from the page, 
it automatically clear the inner flow for you. So here, um, it might be confusing because we are calling, we're probably calling stat inner flow to, to make some UI changes. But the, the inner flow handle doesn't really, doesn't really matter with the, with the UI update. So, so things like this, we can set to the this. Sorry. Uh, so the next uh, next thing I want to talk about some some race condition I've been seeing um, when I when I'm writing uh, React. So uh, let's see what could go wrong here. It's, it's, a, it's a really simple component. So here, um, I render I render a, a channel here, and then if the user click on it, I will I will uh, add some highlight. Style, right? Seems pretty simple. Now let's uh, let's do something more. When I click on it, I want to uh, get more detail of this channel. I make an API, I make an connection which uh, which will go through the store to get the videos, and then I will also set state to highlight it and then unhighlight it after three seconds. Well. If you are doing a set state and action at the same time, you need to be careful because the set state is uh, is uh, the set state technically is asynchronous, but is is pretty fast according uh, comparing to the action. The action is usually uh, making an API call, we trigger an API call. So if you have if the state change depends on uh, your action. Then there may be problem. Your, your, the actions change may may be inconsistent with what your what your your state change. So, if I only want to highlight the component um, after I get more videos, you should do it in the component will receive props. So the flow the flow is like this: you you click on it, trigger an action, and the action call an API. Uh, the, and then the, go through the store to go back to the to the component. Usually, it will be top top down, um, going through the, the props, the top level component, and go through go to the child component as a prop. So the prop will will have the will have a will know that it's a prop change. So now in the prop change, you can see you can you can be sure that your action is is has succeeded or has finished it, and you can you can do the set state according to this. So at last, I'm going to talk about the the store. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at what uh, what we uh, define stores. So according to the documentation, stores contain the application state and the logic, and stores manage application state for a particular domain within the application. So in summary, it, it means stores keep everything, but it it doesn't keep it in just one store. It separates the data into domain, and and we put the data into different stores. So this is uh, the Yahoo's video homepage. Um, so let's see what data we keep here, and we, we go for an exercise to to see what store we would create. So we have a list of channels here. We have some videos of the channels. We have the subscribe the channels. We have the videos of the subscriber channels, and the last we have the current state of the application. For example, if the if the navigation bar is collapsed. So now we create the stores based on the domain of the data. We have we need to have an application store for the application state, with a channel store for the channel objects, we have a video store for the video objects. It seems pretty pretty obvious, pretty simple, huh? But what about the, the duplicate data here? So video store has the video objects. And the application store needs to keep the current playing video. And the channel store needs to keep the videos of the channels. So you see that the video objects are being scattered in, in different stores. So just remember, just keep this in mind. Keep the data in the domain you create the the store based on the domain, 
And then if you if they need to have some uh, some relationship, this channel has some video. You just just link them together if you need to. So for example, in the application store, you keep the state. And if you want to keep the video, you don't want to keep the video. You just keep the ID of the video here. And in the channel store, it, keep, it keeps the actual channel object. But when it links to the video, it just keeps the, the video IDs here. And then at last, the video store will keep the actual video objects. And if you get back the, if you need to get back the full channel object, you just need to get it from the channel store first, and then get from the video store there. So that's that's all about uh, that's all topics I want to talk about. So let's do a, a summary. So in the React component side, if you need to uh, if you need to create mixing, consider grouping them under a namespace to avoid uh, conflicting. But also you need to be careful of the possible singleton. And then remember to choose the right key to avoid the overhead of destroying and mounting, creating and mounting again. And on the state management side, remember state is for internal, prop is for external. And if you have action and state change at the same time, remember to uh, sync them if they need to be. And the last uh, for store, create store under different domains and put the data in the correct domain. That's all about it. Um, actually, I've, uh, I've uh, created there are more topics uh, in it, but because of the time constraint, I removed some of them. Um, you can look at the full version in the GitHub. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. Uh, so we got time for just a few questions. If you do have a question, raise your hand, and uh, either me or Omar will bring a microphone over to you. All right. Hi, great, great lecture, thank you. Um, I, I was just wondering, um, when I was looking into uh, using React mixins, I noticed a lot of people blogging about that mixins were gonna be deprecated in future versions of React. Uh, just any thoughts on that? Yep. Um, so the direction is to, is to use uh, ES6 uh, class instead of uh, using the create class. Um, so I'm not sure it is actually deprecating mixing. The, the behavior of mixing's lifecycle chaining is pretty essential in React. Um, I've seen some examples that, uh, that it, will, it, would use, uh, it would use ES6 to, to uh, create the, the, the mixings and, uh, and, the, and the component. But in order to do something like the life cycle, life cycle training, it, it needs to have some special method to, to know that, uh, like the order of the mixing, to execute them. So I don't, I don't think the, the, react, the mixing, the mixing uh, logic will go away. It will probably be, um, be, be used in a different, in a different, different state. It's, it's just the method, like the create class is, is going to deprecate. Yeah. Hello. Thanks. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, you're talking about React on kind of scalable and large applications. Mm -hmm. We currently have like an Angular app, and it's working quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, but our CTO wants to go React. Uh, what's your opinion? Um, <laughs> I honestly I haven't used Angular uh, enough to comment on this. <laughs> All right, we got. Okay, we got time for one more question. Hi. Yeah. Great talk. So, a uh, quick question on the stores. So every time I look at any kind of thing about flux and stores, they always describe stores as just like a register to hold callbacks, or maybe that's the dispatcher. Case in point, flux is confusing. 
Um, so I, I just remember a React developer had a blog post where they say, oh, well, the store, you don't actually store data. But essentially, you, you would want to, right? Because like, you're saying you're actually storing data client side in the store as if like synonymous with like a backbone mm -hmm. model or something, right? right? Right. So, 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 uh, so, if you if you remember the the the, sent, the definition of store, I show you uh, store store the application state and logic, and most of the time, like in the example I, I show you, it needs to it needs, needs to store the like the full channel so that you can display on the page. According to the to the flux cycle, um, store is the is the main is the main part of the application because it fit, it feeds back the data to the to the component. So that uh, the component will listen to the store change and, and render the, the markup. Yeah, and the, the store is not just about data. It, it needs to have the, the logic as well. OK. Give it up for Lawrence. Thank you. Thanks. That was great.